Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're going to be reviewing... Iron Fist. Yeah, the first episode of Iron Fist entitled... Snow Gives Way, <laughs> which is an interesting title. Um, first, I, I kind of want to bring up a kind of staple with the kind of Marvel Netflix things. Uh, I guess I kind of like the intro credits thing I like the guy doing the thing or whatever but like the theme tune is not strong it's not no no I mean the, the, probably the daredevil one's the pinnacle and then it kind of gradually kind of gets worse I mean the Jessica Jones one's good you know what I mean but I was watching it and I was like with the song I was waiting for it to kick in and do something but it was all kind of very monochromatic which which was a bit disappointing because I kind of get into that stuff and I imagine a lot of people do uh, as well so yeah um, pretty much like th this episode I mean you can draw a lot of parallels with kind of the comic book stuff obviously not much is revealed but you've got him uh, coming into town um, walking the streets barefoot oh. what that's so stupid. I get he's like some kung fu guy that really like is gonna walk round in New York without any shoes. Well, so stupid. Well, to be honest, like all the while I was thinking, I was thinking, well, it's New York, you know what I mean? Someone walking about barefoot. To be honest, people wouldn't kind of blink twice. But yes, I mean, you would. yeah, you would. Nah, of course you would. You walk in the streets of a major city in barefoot. That's ridiculous, mate. It, yeah, look, but it's not that too different. It's not too different from London. If someone was doing that, you'd look at it and think, what an idiot. Nah, it's but, weird. Yeah, but you're not gonna stop the guy. Of course not. No one did stop him, but it's still weird. It's still stupid. And he, why is he walking around like a damn hillbilly? Well, uh, it, with the comic book thing, it, it, that like when he returned, when he kind of returned to New York to reclaim his empire, he was wearing Iron Fist ceremonial garb. So I guess that's mm. a ceremonial garb minus the shoes. So yeah, he kind of he rolls into Rand Industries and is like, "Yo, I'm Danny Rand." Blah blah blah. And then he gets real excited over the little the touch screen monitor thing on the, and then he kinda gets dragged out, comes back in, smacks him up. Uh what's your opinions? What what did you think of the choreography? Cause I mean like IMDB is raining it in at about eighty and rotten to I much. said don't stop. IMDB means nothing. How many more times I'm okay, gonna tell you? Okay, but like Rotten Tomatoes maybe yeah Rotten Tomatoes is still kind of ringing it in at 13 and what percent yeah holy crap it's not that bad is it no I mean I don't think it was very good to be honest with you but 13 I get I <laughs> get I get it was kind of slow and to be honest like watching the episode it'd probably be like reading like the first run of Iron Fist because there was a lot of parallels obviously there was a couple things changed but apart well, from that it was kind of kind of true to his comic book origins it may be like, a bit too true it it was the problem is for me is like a lot of this stuff we've seen it already like we've seen it over and over again the you know the guy coming back from the dead to reclaim his empire we've seen it in batman begins we've seen it in arrow like we've seen all this crap before the the villains we've kind of seen them before the the love interest kind of seen that before and it's just it's a bit hokey. Um, you know, he, he sounds... He sounds like a hippie with the crap he's spouting out. If you kind of... If you kind of drew parallels with them and put them all in a line of, like, the, the, the Batman Begins stuff with him coming back and the Arrow stuff coming back, I mean, if you drew parallels with the first episode of Arrow, this kind of... The first episode of Iron Fist is kind of uh, yeah there's a bit of like kung fu stuff here and there or whatever but it was very talky and I'll, the, 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 I mean pacing issues have been brought up by other people but yeah I guess I'll agree with it but I mean I don't think it was terrible I mean I've seen I've seen a lot worse yeah you'd think with like the first episode it would probably be a bit more gripping and it'd kind of like you know things would be popping off you know what I mean go for broke and then maybe build the story episodes after so I mean in terms of the first episode it was kind of very slow which is different to most other things right and I do think I mean, if you are going to draw parallels of Arrow 
I think the first episode of Arrow is stronger. Yeah, because a lot of stuff was kind of popping off. That's what I mean. Whereas this was, it, it was drawn out. There was a lot of talking, um, but really, I think they could could stre- could have like done the story in other episodes. But I mean, it, it, would that be too like gratuitous and stuff like that? He comes in, he starts like the uh, three quarters of the episode is him going around smacking people up. I mean, it, th- there'd be issues drawn with that as well. I yeah, think, he- I think really. Iron Fist is like, to be honest, a, a kind of difficult character to do. He I is, mean, his, his, his comics weren't that hot, so I mean... No, they I, weren't, and that's you, why they got cancelled. He, he's a hokey... He's a character that's kind of like a hokey B-movie thing. Yeah, if you, And that's sort of how it's playing, you know. It's, the even... I don't want to compare it to, to Arrow too much, but the, the plots are so damn similar, it's hard not to, and... Even Oliver comes out as a more interesting character at the end of that pilot than Danny Rand does. You know, by snapping that dude's neck, by having a list, by having a quest to, to do something, yeah. we know what he wants to do, whereas this dude is like, oh, why did my mum and dad die? And that's it. Yeah. That's um, all we've got. And he's, he's stalking that girl. Yeah. Like, we're breaking into her house. But yeah, it used to be his house, but he knows it's not now. Yeah. Um... I mean, the issue is if they were because uh, 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 as with the comics, I mean, really, there's only one origin and one thing. It's not like there's like uh, it's been rebooted a hundred times over the years, so there's lots of different stuff you can draw on. And to be honest, like to to differentiate it, you'd literally have to completely take it away from the comic books and like completely reboot it but then people would be like is nothing like the comic books blah 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 what people who really is going to get that angry yes i'm i'm sure if you're watching there may be some super iron fist fans but really let's face it it's not that big of a deal i think you can do with updating the story a little i think you do need to change some of it it, it was done in the 70s it was hokey i imagine then it got cancelled for a reason yeah do some update you know because when he's granted we haven't really seen it yet but when he's talking about Kun Lun and he's you know he's, and he's sprouting out their, their crap like I said earlier he just seems like a like a hippie yeah the problem is it is really not relevant to anyone if you you, you it is turning up and is telling these people about this and that but if like s- s- say you come up to me and started doing that I'd like I literally have no idea what you're talking about you oh. know what I mean so those but the the kind of other characters can't really give and take because they're just like yo what are you talking about and it is like literally like I think the issue was like him just randomly returning I mean with Oliver Queen and stuff like that oh yeah there's like a big media stories and stuff like that this guy's found alive but for him he's literally just turned up no media cover- coverage no one really knows what's going on it's just this guy saying I'm Danny Rand right, and, and it's they, just like I don't know what you're talking about mate and so. they have connections as well yeah, Oliver, the, the show Arrow invented a mother and a sister for him to talk to and it gave it made Merlin a friend of his for, well Tommy Merlin a friend of his as a kid Batman always says Alfred and the movie has created um, Rachel I think was her name for him to connect to whereas this dude's just popping up mm-hmm. and the only people he knows are Ward and uh, the sister Ward who, uh, the Joy Joy even right, yeah. who barely even remember him exactly so I mean he has a he has a little slap about in Rand Industries. He kind of gets up there, walks in, and is just like, "Look, I'm Danny Rand," and it's like, "All right, then, mate, if you say so." So he ends up getting kicked out again. Then he kind of he hobos, I guess. He just hobos in the park. I like Big Al. I liked his character. I thought it, I thought it was, <laughs> was stupid. You like he's just sitting there and just like with his phone and stuff. <laughs> best mate is like a like a homeless dude who does he die at the end i couldn't work that out is he dead i don't know i think he just passes out with needle in his arm so he just passes out and then like danny sprouts out some pokey crap again like is, this dude how much i just like this dude and i'm saying it's all this weird crap but yeah he befriends some homeless dude but also what made me lose my mind was that he had that flashback to uh, when he was a kid with um, Ward and Joy. Playing Monopoly. 
like how heavy handed do they want to be with Ward with him, like this dude is like a super bully I don't know he is a bit of a he is a bit of a definite and then it's like oh, uh, when the parents come in and he mugs Danny off to his parents it's like come on mate so why don't you just speak up yeah um, I think they're just trying to make him be an arsehole yeah well they've succeeded yeah um, so yeah what else happened after that uh, he, he kind of he he bumps into Colleen. She's all right uh, with the kind of kung fu thing, and is like, "Can I have a job?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, that we've already got a guy to clean up." So he's kind of bumming around with her, and then I'm trying to think what else. He, break, he breaks into the, the house, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, with the dog, and then he's talking to her again, Joy again, and it's still like, d- 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 it's like, why don't he just turn up? My issue was, why didn't he just turn up and talk about stuff that only he knows about? Because it's like the girl said, it's like, oh, anyone could know that when he says, oh, I'm Danny Ram, blah, 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 did this, did that. Why wouldn't he talk about flipping stuff that's relevant that only he's going to know, which is going to convince her? And it, uh, and he did none of that, and it's just like, oh, but then he steps into the road, right? And again, something we've seen a hundred times, the Spider-Man 2 flip over the car thing. And, and then he runs off somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then as with the comic books, pretty much, like, um, guys are sent after him to kind of do him in, even though no one knows whether he's kind of Danny Rand or not. But it's just like, deal with him. And what, how, no, how the hell they found him, I never know. It seems he's a homeless guy. Oh well, well, obviously, obviously, Ward's in charge of a multi-million-dollar company, so that stuff comes easy. One of them okay. ones. Sure. You're just meant to believe that he's got massive resources and stuff like that. Um, ve- very slow, very drawn out. What What do you think? Of, what do you think of the, the the acting? I guess of the main character. <sighs> See again, I just I don't like him. I don't I don't mean the actor. Maybe he's fine, but I've just I've not given given a reason for like Danny Rand yet. There's no depth to him or nothing like that. No, I think they've kind of. All it is is my parents are dead. I want to know why. Yeah, they've cut. Well, there's really like is kind of disenfranchised because literally like all the that they're, they're a thing when you watch it you think why doesn't he do that why do, he's not doing the obvious things that you would do after you've come back from the dead and it is it, just doing dumb things and you think well why wouldn't you just do this you know what i mean like uh, like go to the police and be like look i'm danny rand blah 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 Oh. Um, but but it but it's literally done none of that and it's just like yo that you you could wrap this all up you could get your company back and get on track to kind of do whatever you want to do your little revenge mission or whatever and find out what happened to your parents you could put yourself in a position to go from there from the first episode but for some reason you're all over the place right because he jumps in he jumps in the car with um ward right <laughs> and they do that whole thing with the girl and all that crap and during that um, he basically says, "I have no living relatives, so I can't prove who I am." It's like there are other ways to do it, but there must be. Even if you've got a dead, you got a dead relative buried somewhere. Dig them up, do a DNA test, job done. Exactly, and there's there's tons of other things. Like as I said, you say things that are only relevant to you. Like one thing I did did when they're in the car and he kind of spins it out and crashes it. I was thinking, I hope he don't like do his power thing and then just stop it like an inch away from the barrier. I was thinking, there's no way that car's stopping. Don't matter what skill you have, there's no way that car's not crashing. So I thought it was okay that when he spun it out, it crashed into the wall. So that was a highlight. Uh, there was a bit with like an eagle as well or a hawk or whatever flying round and I was thinking is that him like doing his consciousness switch thing into the bird and then I was just thinking what's the point of the bird I mean if it was I was thinking that's such an obscure kind of thing to do and it's kind of I don't know whether it's his powers but you got the white lines kind of coming off him giving an aura it's like what's that about 
<laughs> I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the, I mean, the character itself's obscure. But even if it wasn't obscure, the things that they're kind of highlighting in the episode itself are even more obscure. So for in a kind of really kind of low-level B-list character, and they're doing Z-list things with him, you're just going to be confused. I guess I kind of understand why it's kind of been criticised. I don't think it's terrible. I think there are issues with it, but I mean, it's not good. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen the first episode at least of all of the Netflix shows. This is the worst out of all of them. Yeah, um, it, at least I'd say they kind of know now going into the second season or whatever that they know how to kind of like fix it. They know what definitely what doesn't work. I'll write it better. I mean, because we Re- find honestly just reboot him. They should have just done him completely different. I've just, I mean, look, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. We haven't even done this season yet. I mean, I would just say just sticking with Luke Cage. But what I will, they have, they have a scene where they find the dad, right? Or the Joy's dad is alive, which of course I can see that coming from. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get that. Why would he like? Why would he fake having cancer like two years after they vanished and die just to kind of? Why, what? What's his problem? Why wouldn't he just carry on as he was? I don't know, but this scene was as heavy-handed as that flashback scene with them as kids. That thing with the guy who works for him, and oh, you can go. Oh, is it twelve o'clock? Why are you so loyal? Go away. Like that's that's so awful. That's terrible writing. It's like, oh look, he's a bad guy. Like we get it. Like Kingpin, at least there's some depth of him, mm-hmm. yeah. right? I mean, he's a bad dude, yeah. But that thing with Vanessa and the, his temper, they built him up. This dude and Ward are just mustache twirling evil. And then you've got Danny, who there's nothing to him either. There's nothing to any of these characters. Yeah, we're only an episode in, but boy, so paper thin. Yeah, I mean, whatever they're trying to kind of build on, it's strands and stuff like that. Obviously, you had like, he goes to Colleen, he talks to her, he leaves, and then like, he's getting battered in the street, kind of, and like, she's, she's looking out the window so she sees it. It's like, that's really like a real thin strand whether they're going to try and build on that or whatever, like, if he goes to her and is like, oh yeah, uh, it's like, you saw me getting beaten up, so you know, whatever, um, I mean, yeah, you had the plane thing, it's like, why the top of the plane flipped off and she got sucked out, it's like, the plane didn't even crash, so you got to think they're sabotaged, but the fact that, like, the plane's losing control and then randomly the top of the plane, like a section from the top of the plane just flips off and then the mum gets sucked out. I was thinking, why why didn't they just have, a, have it crash and then the parents die? Why be so dramatic, like just a random bit of the plane comes off? Come on. Right, and then like, the, the dad's like, oh, Danny, I love you. Like, how can he even hear him? Oh, it's like, Dan- surely the wind and all the thing with like, he could be getting sucked out as well. They both would, wouldn't they? The, the, you'd think so. I mean, the dad's the, wor- the, the worst actor. He's just like, Danny, I love you. It's like, it really wide-eyed, and I was thinking, this guy's got to be, like, the worst actor ever. Like, one line, he managed to ham it up so, like, it was just terrible. It was just like, yo, what's your problem? It was it, it was breakout terrible. I mean, I, ho- I hope we never see that again. Um, so, yeah, at the end of the episode, he manages to kind of, again, he's sitting down with Joy... And then he's drinking his tea and he carks out and then you got them two and then it flashes to two monks. Um <sighs> It was it was very it was very sporadic and it was very like I mean I don't really. I, th- I really think they should have just took it as an opportunity to completely like ha- still have the thing with have the plane crash, have him train whatever. But apart from that, just completely like reboot things and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still don't get why like Harold's playing dead. I re- obviously they're going to expand on it, but I'm thinking why would he fake his own death? I really don't get that. So. um whether people are after him like in the comics or whatever so I mean really there's not really much to build to build on at the moment so I mean let's talk numbers uh, 
I mean, the way the way Rotten Tomatoes are doing it, giving it ten percent, you got to think the whole run of the episodes are averaging like out of ten stars, averaging like one, or from five stars, averaging half a star. Right, so, yeah, because remember the way Rotten Tomatoes works is it's it's not they don't review movies themselves; it's an accumulator, so it's a bunch of reviews put together, and that's the overall score. So so really, the way they're saying it, if they they scored on our score system where we do it out of 10 they're literally giving every episode like between 1 and 3 out of 10 if that's the score again yeah and then there'll be somewhere in the middle so um, look uh, I'll give it a 5.5 exactly uh, it, weren't, it, weren't, it weren't like terrible look no it's not look it's not flat out awful TV it's just it's nothing I haven't seen before and it's hokey as hell. It's slow. It's kind of bland. But I mean, I I, I give it a five. I would I wouldn't give it. I mean, I've seen a lot worse. You see a lot worse. You know what I mean? In terms of like a first episode, it wasn't hot. You know what it's I not, mean? It's not. But you, of course, you, there's no way you can't compare this to the other shows, mm. which mean, are a lot better. Even if it's going to be very story based and very dialogue based, at least have something hot in the first episode to kind of get people interested in. But right, they have, didn't really and, have and that. Have people care about your characters? There's so there's nothing to any of them. Not all of them. You know, Matt Murdock had Foggy. Matt Murdock had the thing with his dad. He had Karen. Where is uh, is Luke... blind? Right. People kind of feel bad for him, even though there's no reason to feel bad for him. But, I mean, you'd imagine people would feel bad for him. Jessica Jones had all her problem. Luke Cage had his baggage, plus he had the fact that he was in Jessica Jones himself. And yeah, this guy's kind of got no baggage. There's nothing to him. Exactly. There's nothing to him whatsoever. Batman, go you know, if you get Batman in Batman Begins always had his thing, I must avenge my parents by fighting crime. Oliver Queen in Arrow had his thing, I must fix my dad's mistakes and sins and whatnot and scratch off the list blah 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 this show which is very similar to the both of them this dude has nothing mm-hmm. except my mum and dad died in a plane crash yeah like 15 years ago so I've got over it so don't feel bad for me yeah. and everyone else has kind of forgot about it and moved on so don't don't worry about it um, he's stumbling around like a hippie looking like a hillbilly sprouting off some weird crap at least Colleen give him some shoes Oh, don't get me started. It took way too long for that. Yeah. Um, I oh, like yeah. To, I, I, I guess the characters have no depth to them, I guess, at this point. But, I mean, the girl characters are okay. Joy's okay. And I guess... And is I guess she, Ka- Colleen's okay. Well, what's, she's, what's great about either of them? Well, she's kind of like the liaison. You could tell she's kind of believing him. So she's kind of like an ally, I guess. And Colleen... Uh, she's kind of completely way out of it so it's like you don't need to go to her under pretenses it's just like that's a whole new relationship outside of whatever uh, I was left cold by both of them I didn't really feel much for them right okay Uh, so yeah that's our that's a review for the first episode we will be reviewing the rest of the episodes in the coming days I'm Sam I'm Matt and this has been the Superhero Hub